Uh, we need to move on to the next speaker, who is um, Özgür Genç. He is a postdoc at um, UCSF, and he's going to be sharing with us some of his exciting new work on the genetic link between impaired homeostatic plasticity and neurodevelopmental disorder. Thank you. Thank you, Karina, for sharing the session. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yep. Okay, perfect. So today I'm going to talk about the genetic links between impaired homeostatic plasticity and the neurodevelopmental disorders. So I just want to give you a quick overview of uh, what how I define the homeostatic plasticity. So this is uh, this this Adriana just uh, gave a quick overview of that. So I'm just going to show you how we can um, exemplify homeostasis. So a neuron has a certain set point of activity. It can be exemplified this firing rate. And when the system sees a kind of a perturbation that can be environmental or genetics, this firing rate can go down transiently, but in the continuous presence of this perturbation, uh, the systems can restore back to their set points by basically reaching the, this firing rate. So this is basically how uh, neural activity can be controlled homeostatically. So it is quite uh, interesting that this homeostatic signaling systems are uh, very important for brain function, but it's also highly relevant for the um, uh, neurological disorders. So if this signal is impaired, then the nervous system can be less robust to perturbations that can include the genetic or Im immunological or other environmental uh, stressors. So I would like to emphasize this phenomena in autism spectrum disorders. So autism spectrum disorders are caused by uh, idiopathic uh, reason, uh, causes, or there are you know, mutations recently in the last decade have been identified that put individuals into this um, phenotypic spectrum. So here an individual carries a de novo mutation can be totally fine in terms of phenotypic severity, but in certain cases, the spectrum can be vastly different and can be quite severe. So what determines the severity is a kind of a, uh, focus of our research. And I postulate that homeostatic plasticity might act as a phenotypic buffer that might constrain the effect of this de novo mutations in autism uh, spectrum disorders. So the model is, how, how I define this model is, a de novo mutation uh, that puts risk to an individual. And in certain occasions, this mutation can overlap with a genomic variation that is basically inherited in individual's genome. And in this, when these two comes together, then uh, homeostatic plasticity might be impaired. So in practice, this homeostatic buffering is basically lost. And this puts individuals with de novo mutations into the higher end of the phenotypic spectrum. So this is the model. And we want to find out if we can if we can discover this uh, variation, this uh, sources of relevant variation in the genetic background of an organism. So this is quite uh, difficult uh, in um, mammalian systems or identifying this uh, random variation in human population is statistically very difficult. But we can design an assay in a model organism like Drosophila and look for uh, this uh, variation in the Drosophila genome. So the way that we design this assay is basically using homeostatic plasticity in a neuromuscular junction system. So here you are seeing an example synapse with the presynaptic button and the postsynaptic receptors. This fluctuation shows the receptor activity, and this is the excitation when an action potential in the wrist is terminal. So we can perturbate the system by using a blocker of receptors, uh, neurotransmitter receptors, which is called plantotoxin. And you can see here now when we introduce this blocker, the receptor functions uh, vastly uh, diminished. And there's a transient drop in the uh, contraction of the muscle. And as a result of electrogate signaling, now we can restore the activity levels back to the set point, basically in, by increasing the neurotransmitter release. So this phenomena is called as presynaptic homeostatic plasticity. And we can also quantitatively plot this phenomena in this plot. As you can see here now in the x-axis, we are plotting the receptor function as the magnitude of miniature EPSP amplitudes. And in the y-axis now we are plotting the neurotransmitter release, which is basically boosted up when the receptor function is dropped. So this exponential plot shows the 
homeostatic uh, upregulation of the neurotransmitter release. And this can be also shown here as a bar graph when the receptor function is dropped as a concomitant increase, there is an increase in neurotransmitter release. Basically offsets the, the reduction in the receptor function. So by using this assay, we wanted to test first if individual autism mutations as heterozygous de novo mutations impair this process. And to our surprise, we haven't found any evidence of impairment in homeostatic plasticity. So these five major autism gene mutations that were identified in human population had no impairment in achieving homeostatic plasticity. As you can see in all examples, they are all wild type. They are basically restoring back to the baseline levels. So now the, the question is, uh, so we put forward this question, if there is a genomic variation that contributes to the phenotypic severity, what if we just basically put two mutations together as a heterozygous mutation? And what will happen? This is like a simple compound heterozygosity assay in genetics terms. And now what we found is if we put these two mutations together, they are functionally totally uh, separate uh, mutations, biochemically totally separate genes have uh, no uh, previous uh, uh, biochemical or genetic evidence uh, in their interaction. But now when we put them together, now we see a complete failure in homeostatic plasticity. So this basically gave us the idea about finding modifiers of this AST mutations in the Drosophila genome. And to do that, uh, we use Drosophila as a system because it's a tractable system for genetic analysis. Now, what we did is basically we introduced a, again, heterozygous mutation, which is here exemplified by RIMS, and now placed a large deletion of the genome, which is called as deficiency. Then we put this together. You can see here one arm of the chromosome carry one mutation, and the other, uh, the other uh, pair of the chromosome has now a deletion. So if there is an interaction, genetic interaction, now we should be able to find any of the gene that is in this deletion uh, should be responsible. So this is what we did. And we basically, by using this assay, we could basically uh, spend the whole Drosophila genome. In this case, I'm showing the one third of the genome, which is the third chromosome. And that basically covers almost 6,000 genes. So by using this assay, I'm, we found near 20 loci in the, uh, in the, in the third chromosome uh, that basically show this genetic interaction. So this is a basically an um, example of this interaction. Uh, deficiency itself as a heterozygous mutation has no um, impairment in homeostatic plasticity. Whereas when we put this with the autism mutation together, this deficiency now shows an impairment. So this again shows a double heterozygous interaction. And that, that is how we define this uh, locus in the Drosophila genome. So now the question is, can we identify the gene in this deletion? And when can we basically find out the mechanism that basically caused homeostasis to fail? So following this, we found in two deletions, two genes. One of them is a protein phosphatase regulatory domain, PP2R5D, and the other is a protein kinase that we identified in our screen. So then we used the uh, individual gene mutations. So in this case, it's not a deletion, but now it's a uh, loss of function mutation that we used, and we recapitulate the phenomena that we observed in the deletion itself. And this is the case as well for the other gene mutation. So now the question is, we found an interaction between an autism gene and a modifier in the, in the Drosophila genome. Is this modifier will modify another autism gene as well? So this, is, uh, this was our hypothesis, and we tested several autism genes that I showed at the very beginning and tried to see if they will also, uh, they will, uh, the homeotasis will be also impaired in this condition. And surprisingly, what we found when we put this modifier mutation on the background of another autism gene mutation, we also found an interaction that impaired homeostatic plasticity. And four out of five cases and autism mutations that we tested against this modifier, the homeostatic plasticity were impaired. And we did the same thing for the other gene mutation that we found. Again, in four out of five cases, we found an interaction that was not uh, previously tested. So we focused on one of the interactions from this uh, interactome. 
uh, which is uh, the interaction between the modifier that we found and PP2R5D and the gene mutation CHD8, which is one of the top AST risk genes. So uh, we already found this interaction, as you can see here on aesthetic plasticity is impaired, and we wanted to do some further phenotypic analysis. And we did a bunch of essays like intrinsic excitability, synapse anatomy, they were all normal. Uh, except uh, ultrastructural level, we found very interesting uh, observations and phenotypes, which I'm not going in detail right now. But what we found interesting, we looked at the transcriptional profile of this double heterozygous animals, and we found something very interesting that we followed up, which is an upregulation of a gene that is now shown here, which is CRAG, that is a, a repressor of virus induced expression. And this gene upregulation. Um, basically causes homeostatic plasticity to impair because when we introduce a mutation that reduces the overexpression of this gene mutation here shown as a, a mutation, Craig, now we could restore the homeostatic plasticity. So interestingly, it's kind of surprisingly, uh, at the same time when we found uh, this gene upregulation in the Drosophila genome, a paper that was published in um, basically single cell uh, analysis of the postmortem uh, human brain uh, of individuals with autism found in 14 out of seven cases uh, with idiopathic autism, the crack is a gene that was upregulated as well. So that was a quite surprising finding for us. And that might be relevant uh, for the, the, the evolutionary uh, conservation of several genes that are relevant from Drosophila to human. So I, today I tried to give you a kind of an overview of how we see homeostatic plasticity as a protective buffer uh, that constrains the effects of the autism mutations, the ANOVA mutations, and reduces the phenotypic spectrum, phenotypic severity. With that, I would like to thank to my, my lab, Ray Davis Lab, Rick Feather, Ray Elena Kulik, Julia Zunino, and our collaborators, Stefan Sanders and Juna. Thank you, and please uh, welcome your question. Thank you, Asger. This was fascinating. Um, you will be pleased to, well, we're unfortunately our.